G'day, uh, this is Tim Wells from uh, RAM Fiberglassing. Today we're doing a rejuvenation job on uh, Savage Pacific. Firstly, we'll be starting with the transom. As you can see here, it's got a, quite a number of holes in it uh, and uh, we'll be replacing this uh, first. Oh, there's a couple of different ways in which we can do a transom repair. Uh, firstly, uh, which would be the way we'll do this one, would be to cut out through the back of the transom and remove it from behind. Uh, the second option would be to cut the deck off the top and access the transom from the inside. Uh, the reason why we've chosen to do this one as a cut out from behind is the number of holes that are located in the transom at the moment. So if we were to uh, do it from the inside, there would be uh, a lot of uh, detail work at the end of the process anyway. So um, if you have a look up here, you can see where the transom got it through anyway. Um, and this is a classic case of a standard sort of transom issue where water's caught through, generally through these holes, uh, not being sealed properly. And also you can see up to the back here, behind here, it's actually rotted in on the inside as well. So what we'll do is we'll cut this one out and uh, see what we have. And we'll let you know how we go. Okay, so as you can see here, we've cut the small section out here. Uh, you can see that that was that rotted section in here before that we were pushing and pulling through. You can see there where it's delaminated anyway, so it had no strength in it. And if you look down a bit further here, you can see the layers in the wood where the water's actually attacked the glue and separated the ply. You can see that through there as well. And the water obviously is sitting down here, and you can you get down and you can actually pull it out with your bare hands anyway so um, so the only strength that was in this transom was a fiberglass on its own which is two mil three mil at the back and two or three mil at the front on the sides here you can see where it had a bit of strength still left in it a little bit um, but all in all pretty much gone now that transom like this is a lot easier as you can see for us to take out than a transom that's more solid um, which helps us, I guess, in the, the removal process. Um, so we'll keep going with this one and uh, we'll keep you updated. Okay, so we've taken more of the transom uh, out and as you can see, this is the area where the engine would have been uh, bolted on and this is why we suggest with all our customers that if you do uh, drill any holes into your transom that you do use silicon because uh, this is what happens if you don't. And you can see it's obviously had a few engine mounts on it over its years, but none of them have been sealed off properly and it just flakes away. You can even see it where it's got no strength at all at the back, even where it's delaminated here, where you've got your engine well that comes over and comes back down to here, where the glass is just given away because it's, it's taken the full load of the engine. Um, now, the thing for us now is to get this bottom section out. Um, and see how far the rot's gone. Now the rot can also go down through the transom if the stringers haven't been properly sealed off it can come down into your stringers or it can also go down and affect your floor. So as we take this bottom section out we'll then have a good look around up uh, the deck of the boat there and see if we can see any rot that's gone through into the stringers and also into the floor. Uh, the customer wants us to assess for under floor fuel tank to go in at a later stage so we'll do that as well. Now we've already see on the side here that these side pockets are only held on by glass. The wood there is rotted so that it's got water's got through into there as well. So uh, hopefully the floor's okay. It feels pretty solid, but we won't know until we take this out. Okay, as you can see we've uh, taken the rest of the transom out. Um, what we've uh, uncovered is basically that the floor is gone. Uh, as you can see it's bowing in between the stringers and it's all wet and rotted anyway. Um, somebody at some point has done a repair, uh, used a couple of tongue and groove floorboards underneath here to try and prop this middle section up, uh, which is a little bit different. Um, uh, looking at the stringers, they look okay. Um, if we give them a tap, some. Um, Different sound would be something like this. 
the drumming sort of noise. So that back section there, that one's gone. Whereas these sound quite good. Um, and the customer also asked us, like we said before, about a fuel tank. So we've got plenty of space uh, in this void here for a fuel tank if we remove uh, the middle stringer, which we will do at a later stage. And um, yeah, so we'll basically tackle the floor and see what that uncovers next. We'll keep you updated.